It's the 2K Sports pregame show. Good evening, sports fans. This is 2K Sports. Ernie Johnson, Shaquille O'Neal, Kenny Smith. And tonight, it'll be the Houston Rockets going up against the Denver Nuggets at Pepsi Center. Well, for Denver, they're sitting at 500 over the last 10 games, kind of treading water. They'd really like to make a splash over the next few games. Two great backcourts going head-to-head -to -head tonight. Kenny, your thoughts on how the guard position has evolved over time well, and make it quick yeah the evolution quick. of the guard position in 12 seconds please well you weren't quick so why do i have to be so quick well just try eight okay, seconds i'm going to be as quick as i can okay Seven, but i'm going to be six as five, vigilant as i can okay four you know three they're more like combo guards two now. one and with all the switching guards you can defend more position for the teams that rebound collectively guards have to be involved on the boards well, it's almost like you were reading that Shaq. we were going to give you 10 seconds Shaq. you didn't have to rush i did rush you didn't have to I, you know. Yeah. Anyway. Combo guards. Let's go courtside. Live from Denver, it's the home of the Nuggets. We're broadcasting from the Pepsi Center. I'm Kevin Harlan alongside Clark Kellogg and Greg Anthony. From the sideline, our Hall of Famer, David Aldridge. And the Nuggets on friendly ground as they continue this homestand. If you think about their performance from last year, they're about where you'd expect them to be. They'd like to take that next step in a positive direction with the win here in this one. Well, I think for Denver, they're one of the NBA's early season success stories. They've made an immediate push toward the top of the standings. I'm not sure how long they'll be able to stick around up there, but so far it's been a lot of fun to see how much progress they're making. And we've got time for a quick pregame report. With that being said, let's head to the sideline in our Hall of Famer, David Aldridge, D.A. Well, guys, we know when you talk about dedication, Chris Paul is among the greatest. Now, he says, I have a scary passion for basketball. I study it. I watch it all day, every day. I'm not the most athletic guy, so I have to use my mind and my knowledge of the game. Kevin, he is a professor out on the floor. Tremendously competitive with great attention to detail, David. Thanks. And for teams not enjoying a quick start to the season, Clark, how long until they start to push the panic button and making some big moves? You know, Kevin, I don't think you ever can push the panic button. I think you have to have a sense of what direction you're going, be realistic about who you are and what you have. And that's where good leadership comes in, not just with the team itself, from the coaches to the players, but in your front office, too, I mean, You've got to have some flexibility to adjust to the length of the season and challenges of it, and yet still stay on course with your overall plan. Tip-off goes to Houston. Here's the starting group for Houston. The engine of this team, Paul and Harden in the backcourt. E.J. Tucker is out there with Green, and it's Capella in at the five. Now here's Green. One up, one down. Two points with his first shot this game. If you're going in amongst the trees, you have got to be aggressive. Boy, like his intensity, Greg. He's not afraid to take it straight to the rack on the bigger defender. Right at it. I don't think look here for Murray. A shot. No good. The Rockets go the other way with it. This the first chance to take a look at the Nuggets this season. And, and while they swept the season series against them last year, making it pretty clear how much separation exists between the two teams. Yeah, Greg. I mean, one is a playoff team. The other question mark dot 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 not so much but things change and you're only as good as your last win so we'll see how they handle things tonight here's Harris and the rebound goes to the Rockets defeated by the Pacers in their last game they'll try to put that one behind them and their defense practically non-existent in that one. Just gave up far too many easy shots. Yeah, I think they were totally checked out, Greg. At least that's what it looked like. When you play that kind of defense, you expect to lose. Paul looking around. Five on the clock. Fires from deep. Martin with the rebound. 
And so it's Barton bringing it up for the Nuggets. Four-point game. Murray, good. No answer for Murray from the defense so far. Absolutely ferocious at taking it inside. Paul outside. Kicks it to Tucker. Lob pass to Capella. Jokic with the steal. Martin passes to Murray. Now, here's Jokic. Just five to shoot. With some arc. And the shot is good. It's all knotted up. Gary Harris not bothered by intense, tough defense. He's dialed in. Paul kicks to Green. Here in the first, just under two and a half minutes played so far. Jokic with the steal. And pushing it up. Here's Denver. Here's Barton. Another shot. And foul on the shot. So he'll get a chance at the line. And you've got to love it. I mean, Millsap drawing contact. Not afraid to get banged around a little bit. And Paul Millsap absolutely loves an unselfish style of play. Well, he firmly believes that everything good starts with five guys willing to give up the basketball to get a better shot, going from good shot to better shot, and willing to get the open guy the ball. Oh, Millsap, two that's shot. both fun to watch two shot. and fun to be part of. That free throw missing. Tell you what, Paul Millsap, one of my favorite players because he's so effective, scores at an efficient clip, rebounds the ball well, and defends multiple positions too. He gives you everything. Now the free throw is good, now leading by one. And Paul Millsap, a four-time All-Star in Atlanta. Greg, as we know, he missed most of last season after left wrist surgery. A, a big loss after just signing that mega contract with the Nuggets. I mean, he's a lot older than most of their core, but a great fit in their front court, and, and obviously one heck of a player. And he hits it and gets hacked on the play. A three-point possibility if he can convert the free throw. You know, we talk about Harden's skill set, which is superb, but there's no quit in this guy. He's got a great competitive spirit. And even when you bang him and bump into him, he just muscles through that and says, play on. throw good James Harden and you look at James Harden coach Mike D'Antoni in the rocket front office it really does seem like a match made in heaven yeah I think the alignment of the front office and coaching staff really in harmony and a star in Harden who's the best in the world at delivering in that system Chris Paul part of the mix too that's a pretty good fit it looks like to me Hey, I tell you what, the contest on that shot was lacking. Very subpar, which is why the shooter buried it. Floats one. A second chance effort. Here's Capella. And the layup's good off the glass. Capella's got his first bucket of the night. Hey, you got to put a body on Capella. I mean, he's a tenacious offensive rebounder and does a nice job using his body. Barton finds Jokic. Gonna go that time. Good work defensively by Capella. Out left to the wing. And stolen by Murray. And here comes Harris leading the fast break. Harden with it. He's coming off a 19-point game against Indiana. And sometimes, you know, you don't capitalize off a good shot or a good look. Still, you got to keep letting those good looks fly. Green against Barton. And there's a whistle that's going to go on James Harden. That's his first foul. Oh. 
Barton kicks to Murray. Three pointer, and it's Barton that time on the assist by Murray. Barton's got his first three points of the game. It's obvious that Barton's jump shot has come a long way. Right now, he's pretty solid at catching and shooting. Tucker, the pass to Harden. To the inside, Green counted his second make in four attempts. Now, how about how he sets his man up there, runs him right into the screen, and then gets the basket? Harris against Harden. Harris kicks to Murray. Jokic on top. And he buries that one, drilling the rim on the way down. Jokic has got his first two points. Harden against Harris. Now, here is Harden. He seems to always be finding ways to score, averaging around 23 and a half points a game. Well, at best, the defense was average. I mean, he must make sure to finish these layups. Got to make those. Murray, the pass to Jokic. No good from outside. The Rockets trail. Here's Harden. Some solid defense from Harris. The shooting numbers just aren't there yet in the quarter. Murray for three. It's rebounded by Houston. Capella's got five rebounds tonight. Harden finds Paul. And it's sent back by Jokic. Outstanding timing from Jokic there. Then the superb reach to wipe away the shot. Martin from outside. Paul grabs the board. Well, it's surprising that he clunked that one. I mean, especially since the defense was nowhere to be found. And Green gets it to go. Man, this thing is just going back and forth tonight. Yeah, it's been a seesaw battle. Right now, I mean, as soon as one team grabs the lead, the other grabs it right back. Here's Murray after the Rockets pick up three. Back to Harris. Six on the shot clock. Here's Jokic. The shot, no good. The Rockets go the other way with it. Paul passes to Tucker. And oh boy, a lot of contact there, but he gets the call and will shoot two. And P.J. Tucker, Greg, a rugged physical defender at the forward. And here's the guy, second-round pick back at 06. Spent five seasons playing abroad before making his return to the association. Now he's a seasoned veteran and not shy about holding his teammates accountable, especially defensively. First one drops. You're always looking for guys with confidence, but then some guys maybe go a little bit too far with that element, and <laughs> the efficiency level will drop below their talent level. There are guys that can be swayed by that. Yeah, you're right, and uh, it's a, a mixed bag with those kind of guys because the talent is always on display, and it's uh, hard not to appreciate it, but the inconsistency is frustrating. Perhaps the guy who maybe best epitomizes that is Lance Stevenson because he's when he's good, mm -hmm. he can give you a lot of stuff at both ends. When he's sideways, <laughs> he can uh, hurt you a little bit, too. Timeout is called. First of the game for the Nuggets. And you know, P.J. Tucker drafted back in 2006. Wow, that's a dozen years ago already. But, you know, he spent a handful of seasons in Europe early on refining his game, a good move for him, came back with a three-point shot that's become the foundation of his offensive arsenal. Chris, he's checked in for P.J. Tucker. Outside, Porter. Back to Plumley over Nene. Porter kicks to Lyles. And the pass to Thomas. Moves back up. It's rebounded by Houston. And P.J. Tucker, a 6'6 uh, player, a, a combo forward, really versatile. You know, in some ways, that used to be a backhanded compliment, but his combination of strength and quickness and his rebounding ability 
I mean, this guy is tenacious at chasing down loose pumpkins and plays defensively either forward position quite strongly. So a lot of value from P.J. Tucker. The shot's good from Plumlee. And a nice job here early of establishing an inside presence. Thomas against Rivers. Now here's Gordon. He's guarded close. And it's Ennis that time on the assist by Eric Gordon. And the Rockets lead by five. Timely passing leads to assists, and that's been the recipe for success. Everybody on the same page, completely in sync. Tremendous communication and awareness. Out of bounds, Houston takes possession. And, and let's check out some stats. Here are the numbers for Gordon. He's getting around 16 points a game, three rebounds, and two assists. And every team in the league needs shooting. That's what he brings coming off the pine. Yeah, there's always a demand for shooters, man. Half jumper, will travel. I'm telling you, most championship teams, they have a bunch of those guys who can put it in the basket. Now here's Rivers, still looking for his first bucket in this one. Pass to Ennis, from past the arc, and again it's the Rockets from deep. And their offense already in a flow, some stellar shooting to jump out to this lead. Quality looks they're getting, and they're capitalizing on them, guys. They have to be happy with this start offensive. Thomas, good. Good timing that time from the point guard, Isaiah Thomas. Very good at picking the right time to pull up. Here's Rivers. Good for the basket. Starting off one for one with that shot. Your heads up aggressive play right there. Saw the smaller man on him and took it straight to the basket. Here's Lyles. He's coming off a 10-point game against Milwaukee. Yeah, excellent work on the boards that night. Always in attack mode, and that allowed him to get plenty of rebound. Here's Rivers following the score by Jamal Murray. Rivers kicks to Gordon. And it's Gordon finishing it off. And Gordon has the burst of speed you like to see in a guard. Excellent at knifing through the defense to the cup. And here's Thomas who brings it up for the Denver Nuggets. They trail by seven. Buries it down low. Thomas got five. Not much the defense can do once he gets to the bucket. Rivers looking over the floor. Shooting foul as the whistle blows. He'll shoot two free throws. And Austin Rivers out of Duke, an elusive 6-4 combo guard. I mean, a great handle, and, and he's found most of his offensive success with his development as a long-range shooter. He's gotten to the point now where you want him to put it on the deck. free throw no good a lot of coaches out there Clark wear their emotions uh, very prominently on their sleeve others take the calm cool approach as a player was there a particular style that you prefer yeah my preference was cool calm be direct be firm but not necessarily overly emotional and in my short stint with the Pacers Jack McKinney was more of the cool and calm approach he was excitable but a little bit even killed. George was a little more emotional, but still, I, I enjoyed playing for both of them because I think I was clear in that they were uh, trying to get the best out of me and the best out of the team. Good way to look at it. And guys, let's get your take on the scoring breakdown for the Rockets. We've seen a lot of their points coming off penetration in the first half. Something else they've been able to do so far tonight is earn those tough points in the paint. Free throw good, Thomas. Well, you know, you don't get to flourish like IT does without being very creative. Always finds angles to get a shot up, even when defended well. You do what you have to do at his size to finish a drive, and he's one of the best small guys in the league in finishing. 
That one falls, so he hits both of them. And Isaiah Thomas is so great, Clark, at that floating shot over the help defender. Well, at his size, you've got to have that in your in your back. I mean, he just knows how to get that shot off and feel where it needs to be lifted from. Does the same thing with his passing out of traffic, and I think it's just his IQ and understanding. He's really one of the most exciting players in the league. Now, here's Lyons, following the miss by Austin Rivers. Deep two for Murray. Cans the shot with nobody near him. Murray's got six. The shooting percentage is really solid so far, fellas. Good start to this game for him. On the wing, Gordon fires for three. Out to Chris. Back to Ennis. And looks like That's the great. illegal pick was set. Yep, that's right. That'll get their attention. Yeah, still moving a little bit when he set that screen. He'll argue that he was set, but I, I really didn't think so. It was very close, and I wouldn't mind letting them play on that one. It wasn't blatant by any means. And the Nuggets making a change here. Hernan Gomez is jacked in. Now, here's Thomas. Playing Milwaukee, he was nearly unstoppable. The shot's good. 34 seconds left in the first quarter of the game. Rivers with it. Now Thomas defending. Rivers kicks to Chris. Sinks the triple. Chris has got himself going with the triple, his first basket of the game. Uh, the touch is there. Next comes the consistency. Chris wants to be seen as a threat from deep. Thomas against Rivers. And here is Thomas. This one for three. And the last shot of the buzzer doesn't go in for him. A good close contest so far as we finish the first quarter. Rockets lead by three. And the second quarter will get underway just after this short break. And being a smaller player is a challenge, but Isaiah Thomas always confident attacking the lane. I just go in there. I've been doing it since I was a little boy. Like, I've always been the smallest guy out there, but when I get on the court, I feel like I don't see any height. So when I go in there in the paint, I expect myself to score or make a play for somebody else. And then, I mean, it just, other people go crazy about it. I, I feel like it's normal. Thomas brings that fearlessness, Greg. He's always played with a chip on his shoulder. Yeah, and he's got a deep bag of tricks for finishing around bigger players. It's really something to watch. And we hope you're enjoying the game. Both teams tonight keeping things pretty even so far in the scoreboard. Let's quickly break down the game we've seen so far from the Rockets, guys. I mean, what, what's interesting for me, first quarter, they're already getting points from their reserves. Yeah, and that bench boy has been really good. Provided a nice spark so far. They've got Plumley. Thomas is out there with Murray. Then it's Porter. And it's Hernan Gomez in at the power forward. That's the group for Denver getting going here in the second. Now here's Porter. Nothing yet on the scoreboard for him. And it's in there. A pure shooter who's also efficient. Porter nearly automatic from mid-range. And we're about a minute into the second quarter of play. Here's Rivers, and that one good. Rivers has got his second bucket of the night. No shortage of drama here early on. Yeah, eight lead changes already. Huge number this early. And we've got an update here, so let's check in with David Aldridge reporting from the sideline. Hey, guys. Well, some have nicknamed center Nikola Jokic the Joker, and he does have a lighthearted approach. He said, this is not a job. I'm enjoying the game like a game of pickup basketball in my hometown. That's the mentality. No pressure. It's just a game. He feels that staying calm helps him succeed. Kevin? Thanks, D.A. Now here's Gordon. He's been a factor in their offense on most nights with his scoring average at nearly 16 points a game. Nene against Jokic. Tipped away. Jokic with the steal. 
Thomas, it's a wide open look, buries the long range jumper. Thomas got the lead up to two now for the Nuggets. And now we'll get perspective here on how the hustle game has been going for Denver. They've come out in attack mode on the defensive end. They've applied pressure and forcing turnovers. The other thing that's helped them early tonight are the points they've been able to convert off turnovers. And this is where Chris does a considerable amount of damage. Feels comfortable taking those interior shots. Now, here's Thomas. He's got 12. Harris kicks to Porter. Trying to find Jokic. Gets it to him. And he takes it in for the layup off a very nice feed. Jokic has got his second bucket of the game to go. Harris against Harden. Eric Gordon on the wing over Porter. That misses off the back. Door. The shot's there for him, and he's got to take it. I don't care if he doesn't convert. That's a shot he has to continue to take. Now, here's Jokic. He's coming off a 19-point game against Milwaukee. And how about the job he did rebounding as well, guys? I mean, just a dominant performance on the glass. And so Thomas will bring it up for the Denver Nuggets. Atlanta will be traveling to face them after this game. And that game closes out the four-game homestand for them. Rockets trail by four. Having now been a head coach for five full years, two years with the Kings, three with the Nuggets, Malone's had his fill of inexperienced rosters and has done a reasonably good job with them. Well, we've seen that movie a few times, haven't we? An easy bucket in the paint well listless and lifeless at the defensive end i mean especially inside they've really got to pick up that interior defense pass to hernan gomez outside porter thomas feeling it out a bit passes it to Jokic. out of bounds houston takes possession now that we have a moment let's see who have been the top assist teams in the league this season fourth the nuggets and a team that shares the ball will create opportunities for the right player to score. For Houston, they've gone three of seven shooting the ball here in the second quarter. Harden kicks to Gordon. And trying for the go-ahead basket, it doesn't go in. And it's great to see how Malone's been able to develop these young players. Yeah, it sure is, because I think the players have a lot of respect for him. They play hard for him, certainly. And they see he's willing to make adjustments. I think he does a nice job adapting his style to his personnel. It has been nip and tuck through the first half. Exactly, guys. The way it's seesawed back and forth, unbelievable. And finished off by Rivers. And, and guys, that's a big swing right there. I mean, taking the steal and then turning it into two easy points on the dunk. No telling how important that sequence could turn out to be. And guys, in a game this snug, moments like that are the ones we usually look back on at the end as a difference maker. Thomas goes in. Gordon with the defensive effort. That is some tough defense there against one of the better finishers in our game. Inside, here's Rivers. Good. It's Harden with the assist that time. Harden's got three assists tonight. And it just seems that every pass they make is leading to a score. Just great ball move. And Jokic slams it in. Tell you what, with Jokic, you've got to foul him harder than that. This big fella takes pride in finishing through the defense. And Nikola Jokic, boy, the addition of that three-point shot, Clark, has really opened up things for his offense. Without question, Kevin. Already a great passer. Now that he can stretch the defense, the passing lanes become wider for him. Also, the driving lanes open up for his teammates. So very difficult to take away everything when Jokic is knocking down perimeter shots. One shot. And that one misses. And Nikolai Jokic came late to the game. Uh, he actually grew up horse racing. Finally started playing organized hoops at the age of 16. You never know it, though one of the most skilled big men the league has to offer. And started hot, and he's only gotten harder. And now the first timeout called here for the Rockets. 
And Jokic, Greg, said he was a fat point guard until he got taller. <laughs> well, even now, Kevin, Jokic, not the most chiseled physique, but the point guard background makes sense. His playmaking for a center is off the chart. And a quick review, looking at some numbers here for Barton. Averaging 12 points, four assists, and four rebounds. And, and some pretty good numbers, guys. He's certainly making a contribution. Better than expected. He still has a ways to go, but I like what I'm seeing right now. Houston's gone one or two on three-pointers here in the second quarter so far. Harden dishes to Capella, and it's good for two. Capella's got his second basket. I love what Capella brings to the game. Tough, physical, strong, relentless. Got to respect what he does on these contact finishes. Now here's Barton. 14 points from him the last game against Milwaukee. And he also chipped in with a couple blocks in that game. Just a hint at the impact he had on the defensive side. On the wing, Harris. Guarded by Tucker. Lock at six. Harris gets to Millsap. Over Harden. And they force the shot clock violation. Great D. Denver making a switch here. Isles checked in. Rockets leading by three. Al Paul. He's coming off a 25-point game against Indiana. And, you know, that night his defense was remarkable as well. He was excellent at coming up with steals. Here's the floater. And it's Jokic with the rebound. Jokic has got five rebounds tonight. Harris against Harden. Harris finds Millsap. Stolen by Tucker. Outside, Green. Harden left side. Over Harris. Jokic grabs the miss. Jokic has got six rebounds in the game. The Nuggets moving the ball around. Harris inside, guarded by Harden. That one's in there. Rocket lead is cut down to just one on the bucket from Harris. And it's Harden with the ball for the Rockets. Over in the corner, Green. Ball outside. And Tucker has it in the corner. Connects from three-point range. Tucker's got five points so far. Room service assist from Paul. Can't put the ball in a better spot. His vision outstanding. Martin passes to Jokic. Stolen by Tucker. Here's Harden. Whistle blows. Basket is good. So a chance here for a three-point play. The assist totals, Kevin, just continue to grow. They're way ahead in that category. Ball movement has been flawless. Clearly just an example of a different mindset between these teams. He's gone one of one in the game so far from the line. An 89% free throw shooter puts him right there among the league's best from the line. And guys, I think that's a tribute to his work ethic. I mean, it's not by accident that he's enjoying the success he is at the free throw line. And James Harden was crowned MVP after last season. Uh, Greg, hard to argue with that selection. Uh, Harden has had a case to win an MVP award for several years now. Finally was able to be the clear choice this past season. Another great line on what is shaping up to be a hall-worthy resume. The Nuggets trail by nine. Barton kicks to Millsap. Back to Barton. Harden against Harris. Floats one up, and Capella sends it back. And every season, Capella has improved as a shot blocker. Timing, awareness, recognition. He's really good at erasing shot attempts. And the Nuggets with some changes. Plumley comes in for Jokic, and Murray subbed in for Harris. And a change for the Rockets. And as he's checked in for James Harden. Denver's gotten fewer than half of their three-pointers to go down tonight. They're four for nine. 
And there's the foul. It will go on P.J. Tucker. That's his third foul of the game. And already his third foul. It's got to be time to get him out of there probably until the third quarter. Now here's Millsap. Nine points last game. Murray, no good. Hard to figure out how he doesn't knock that one down. No defender in sight. Here's Paul. Off target there. That would have pushed the lead to double digits. Barton surveying the floor. Down to five on the shot clock. From deep three-point range, rebounded by Capella. <laughs> Just testing out the cannon on that misfire. <laughs> that certainly was a deep one. I mean, maybe move in a little bit next time. There's no such thing as a four-point line. You know, when Chris Paul came to the Rockets, a lot of people questioned if he and James Harden would be able to share the ball both known for being ball dominant guards I think you'd have to say it's worked out pretty well and he can't get the first one and I think Chris Paul never comfortable with that ball dominant label Greg he never played with another guard who could create, certainly on the level of Harden. No doubt about it. I mean, Mo P, J.J. Redick, guys who were great shooters, but really more off the ball players. Chris needed to, to be that kind of a playmaker, but with Harden, he has someone just as gifted at creating baskets for himself and others. Guys, they're looking for a way to score here. Yeah, they've had a tough time taking the lid off. Time called here. The Nuggets decide to talk it over. They put up a nice win against the Bucks the last time out. Yeah, and fortunately for them, I, I thought the opponent's defense just never showed up. Yeah, you know what? The waters were calm for most of the game. I mean, little resistance felt like they could get any look they wanted at any time. And a look here now, Kevin, at how the Rockets are stacking up as we get this season underway in the NBA stats. And going back to their points allowed ranking, they slow the game down, forcing opponents to score in the half court. I mean, if you can score at all, really suffocating you on defense. The Rockets making a switch here. Gordon's checked in. Look at Mason Plumley. He's a throwback big in my mind. You're not going to see him stretch the floor. That's not what he does. He has a hard time from the free throw line, certainly. But his size, effort, activity, really valuable to this team. Now here's Paul. Five points in the game. It's good from Gordon on the assist by Paul. Gordon's got the lead up to 10 now for Houston. And really, the three-point shot is Gordon's specialty, Kevin. When he squares himself up, there's a real high chance he's dropping it in. And talking about Plumlee, what he gives you often fails to show up on the stat sheet. Well, you know, the thing I like about him is his hustle. He makes those extra possession plays, those activity plays. He's tough, doesn't need the ball to be effective. And the other thing he does better than most big guys in the league is run the floor. Here's Gordon after the basket by Will Barton. And it's Gordon penetrating up and in on the layup. Gordon's got the lead back up to 10 now for the Rockets. Boy, he's dangerous right now. He feels like he's making every shot he puts up. And taken away by Paul. There's his third field goal, and now he's made half of his six shots. Never surprising to see Chris Paul start the break now. But as we see right there, he's just as good at finishing it. That's tipped. And it goes out of bounds. Uh, last touch by Paul. And a quick look now at the best free throw shooting team. In third, the Rockets. You know, it's really a team-wide talent. You want to foul to stop layups, but against them, you're not saving much. They'll make you pay time and again. The Nuggets trail by 12. Millsap dishes to Barton. And it's slammed in by Plumlee. Leaving folks open around Barton is a no-no. He'll torch you whenever you do that. Paul kicks to Capella. Paul against Barton. Paul finds Gordon. Just five to shoot. Houston needs to get a shot off. 
Paul can't get it to go. Yeah, not a great shot there, especially when you got a lockdown defender guarding you. Agreed. I mean, when the defense is right there, you've got to move the ball, make the extra pass. That's a case of a poor shot selection. The first one falls. Well, you know, one of the things about Mike D'Antoni is that he's an excellent offensive man, but he gives his players so much confidence. His defensive reputation is not as strong, but with the Rockets last season, they actually were a lockdown team at times. D'Antoni answering those critics about not being a defensive-minded coach. Both shots good from the strike. 56 seconds left to play in the first half. To the middle. And it's Green missing. That's what we're talking about in terms of the activity level defensively. You got to protect the rim. Mm -hmm. Textbook defense all around. Nice job at contesting the shot without fouling. And that's how you do it. Well done. Now here's Murray. A 23 point game for him in the win against Milwaukee. A gigantic game for him at the free throw line. He was an instigator, drawing a ton of contact and really just hunting for the whistle. To the paint. Ennis with the ball. Millsap on him. Ennis misses. Thomas with the ball. They get a hand on it. And so we wrap up the first half. The Rockets on top, leading by eight. From the Pepsi Center in downtown Denver. We're back in a moment. It's the 2K Sports Halftime Show. Greetings, friends and neighbors. One half down, another half to go. Ernie Johnson, Shaquille O'Neal, Kenny the Jet Smith. It's the NBA on 2K Sports. Eric Gordon taking care of business in this one. He had 12 points and one assist. What'd you think, Shaq, about the first half we saw from the Rockets? You know what, Ernie? I got to stand up on this one. I salute to their bench. Man, once the starters came out, man, the others just came to life. You got to love seeing that kind of contribution come from the others. Man, they look beautiful tonight. And over to Kenny. What did you think about Denver? Well, the perimeter D is <laughs> just too loose. I mean, there's no excuse for letting the team rain that many threes on you. And at that high a percentage, guys aren't fighting through screens. They're not staying with their shooters. They're not helping out. Just bad basketball on a defensive end. They've got to tighten it up on a high level in the second half. And that wraps up the halftime show. Third quarter is set to begin in just a few. The Denver skyline looking absolutely gorgeous tonight as we return to the Mile High City. And happy you could join us. We've got two quarters left to go in regulation. We're seeing a tremendous game from Eric Gordon. Yeah, so far they haven't found an answer for him. A, a scoring machine here in that first half. Yeah, and it's been fun to watch, partner, because not only is he shooting a high percentage, a good percentage, he's also carrying the team. And for those of you just tuning in, thanks for being with us. The second half of this game is still to play. And so it's Murray who brings the ball up for the Denver Nuggets. Eight-point game. Taking a look at the Rockets. Paul and Harden are the incredible backcourt duo. Gerald Green out there with Ennis. And it's Capella in at the center, locking down the middle. Now here's Murray. Just five on the clock. Here's Jokic. It's hauled in by Clint Capella. Martin against Green. Down low, and he gets the whistle for the three-second call. And now a chance to see what's coming up for the Denver Nuggets. On Thursday, it'll be the Atlanta Hawks coming into town. And then on Saturday, they'll be facing Drew Holiday and the New Orleans Pelicans. And for that game against the Timberwolves, that's a contest that could easily go either way. Small mistakes could be the difference and both teams will need to be at their best. Jokic is really good in these pick and pop situations. He loves it and he executes them very well. 
Paul passes to Harden. Jokic with the steal. Fast break. Here they come. There's the feed to Murray. Ball's knocked loose. Teardrop shot. Rockets with the rebound. Now here's Paul. He's got seven. He dishes it to Green. Fouled on the shot and picks up two points. So one free throw coming up. Man, you like the intelligence he plays with. You got to respect that. Gets to his spots and scores efficiently. And he's got his first chance at the line here. P.J. Tucker, he's checked in for Ennis. One shot, gentlemen. Free throw good, Green. And the Denver Nuggets. This is a team, Clark, that's slowly building for the future. 46 wins last season, Kevin. The most they've had in five years, coming up just six points short of making the playoffs. And this is a team that's hungry. And they're starting to believe in themselves, too. Defensively, this is what you know. He's coming off a hot game and looking to keep it rolling. As well he should, Greg. I mean, he always is looking to score the ball, even more so when he's hot. I like the mindset. The Nuggets trail by six. Harris outside. He kicks it to Murray. Basket is good. The assist from Harris. Murray's got nine. Got to give respect to the range of Murray. I mean, he can nail it from distance. Paul against Murray. The pass to Harden. And they wasted no time getting those three points back. Nine points in the game so far. And that's how you answer back. Exactly, Greg. I mean, go right back at him. Show him you can shoot from outside all night long. Harris. And he could not get that one to go. A lot of contact, and he'll go to the line for two. It's going to be on James Harden. Harris's confidence and physicality and determination allow him to draw fouls as he gets close to the basket. First one falls for him. And Gary Harris, a 6'4 shooting guard out of Michigan State. Uh, on paper, you might call him undersized, but with his strength and toughness, he's got it covered. And so he hits both. And if you're making a list of the best young shooting guards in the league, Greg, I, I got to think that Gary Harris is on that list. Absolutely. A two-way player defends his tail off, and offensively, he can score at all three levels. And it's Capella missing. Yeah, good interior D there prevents the deuce. And, you know, that's not easy at all. When guys get this close to the bucket, it's tough to stop the basket. Al Paul following Will Barton's three-point attempt. The shot's good from Paul. And that bucket adds to what has been a big difference in points in the paint between the two teams. Yeah, it's really been quite a contrast. I like the way they're attacking the middle um, at their offensive end. Here's Jokic following the basket by Chris Paul. And two free throws coming up, unable to get that one to go with all the contact. You know, in recent years, the Rockets have not lacked for critics. I mean... They're a jump shooting team. They're a bean counting front office. A coach whose teams don't defend. Last season, I think, silenced a lot of those critics. The first free throw is good. And Clark, it all seemed to come together for the Rockets last season. What was the key in your estimation? I think you've got to look right at the addition of Chris Paul, reducing the workload on James Harden, more defensive-minded wings, also the development of Clint Capella. When you factor those things in, he gets 65 wins during the regular season for the Rockets. And Jokic slams it in. 
Boy, you got to like how locked in Jokic is on offense now. His confidence is sky high, and he believes he can score on anybody, anytime. He's got his fourth free throw of the game. And he is a cool customer at the line, guys. You've got to be when you're shooting 84% on the season. Guys, he's slightly fallen off his pace from a year ago at the line, and those points from the strike have been a little harder to come by. Free throw, good. Jokic. And Gary Harris, anytime you talk about him, hard not to mention, Clark, the efficiency of his game. Without question, I mean, very low turnover rate for his level of usage. Doesn't force things. Likes to get his points within the flow of the offense and a very high percentage shooter at all three levels. Timeout call, the Rockets. Yeah, just hitting a reset button, a chance to kind of talk some things over. Yeah, recalibration time with the timeout call there. Little under two and a half minutes off the clock now here in the third. Rivers with it. Now guarded by Barton. And he's fouled pretty hard on that shot, but he's got the chance to pick up the points at the line. It's going to be on Jokic. The Rockets have made seven out of nine when they've stepped to the line. And they've had really good numbers all season from the free throw line. And guys, that's a pretty good improvement over last season. good from the line that time and the Denver Nuggets you look at their improvement last year Clark especially on their home court yeah you know they owned the NBA's fourth best home record last season Kevin went 31 and 10 and you know some of it obviously is the altitude but also when you've got younger players they play better at home because they're not quite emotionally mature enough to be consistent on the road yet he's made three of his four free throw attempts in the game you take a look at the Rockets' offense, and they've become lean and mean. Very few mid-range shots, no long twos. It's all threes and points in the paint. They keep their menu tight, and it works for them. Now, here's Green. 12 points for him. Here's Tucker. Rocket six. Trains the three-pointer. Tucker's got eight points. Tell you what, for a guy who's inconsistent from three, Tucker's showing you he can be scary out there at times for a defense. He gets a chance now to catch up with the fourth member of our crew, Hall of Famer David Aldridge. Well, Kevin, since the rise of the Warriors, we've seen a fair amount of soul-searching by the league's other contenders. There is incredible pressure to shake things up. Now, sometimes it can elevate a team, but we have often seen it also can tear a team apart. It can be fragile for sure. David, thank you so much. You talked about the Rockets' focus offensively. It's all on Harden and Chris Paul. Yeah, they're the main shot creators for that offense. Everybody else better be oh, happy spotting two up, shots. setting picks two and shots. rolling, and scoring in transition. The Beard and CP are going to have the ball in their hands most of the time. First one falls for him. We're still waiting for that first miss from the line this half. 100% since halftime? Come on now. I'm not sure this lead's going away anytime soon with that kind of marksmanship. Both free throws good from Green. And the Denver Nuggets probably would have made the playoffs last year if their defense, Clark, had performed as well as their offense. Well, simply put, dead last in opponent's field goal percentage. Very few teams with that stat ever make the playoffs. Some of it's perhaps scheme, but most of the time it's about attitude and effort and personnel. That's not going to get it done in the robust and tough West. Now here's Rivers following the miss by Jokic. To the inside. And Harden gets it to go in on the assist by Nene. Harden's got five points now this quarter. And you know, the thing about Harden, crafty in the paint, he really finds angles and avenues to get the shots he wants when you don't think there's any angle or avenue to find. And being over the limit this early really can affect your aggressiveness defensively. They have got to play under control. And a moment to look at the scoring approach in terms of where the points are coming from. 
for the Rockets. They keep piling up the assists, and they haven't cooled off at all. Another thing they've done tonight is work the ball into the paint for plenty of those close-range points. you got to have those. And the first one at the line is good. And, you know, last year the Nuggets, really incredible offensive production, top 10 in points and assists, and had the sixth-best offensive rating in the league. Thomas checked in for the Nuggets, and a change for the Rockets. Gordon's checked in. And, Clark, talking about the Nuggets, this is a roster that's built to put up points. Yeah, and that's the name of the game, Kevin. I mean, we love talking defense and this other stuff, but the game is about putting the ball in the basket. And when you've got shooters and a bunch of them who share the ball, that's a fun team to watch. You know, James Harden, the leading isolation scorer in the league for the last three years plus, he's taken it to a whole new level, almost 12 points a game in isolation in 2018. And his efficiency, the best in the game, is off the charts. We throw good from Harden. And it's interesting, isn't it? Isolation, one-on-one -on -one basketball has lost favor league-wide, but Harden flips that logic on its head. Yeah, it can still be a little frustrating to watch at times, Kevin, but it reminds me a bit of the way that Steph Curry changed the definition of a good shot, his deep range and marksmanship from long distance. Now more and more players are shooting it from that deep. Harden is changing the definition of a good possession because he's just so talented at making the toughest shots look easy. Now here's Thomas. He's got 12. Harris kicks to Thomas. And it's Jokic in the corner. And a miss there on the triple. Rockets leading by five. Pass to Rivers. Over Thomas. A nice shot by Rivers. Rivers has got 11. And here's Thomas who brings it up for the Denver Nuggets. And again, Denver no good. Houston's gone two of two from long range in the third quarter so far. Count it. And now a nine-point Rocket lead. And you can sense... They're starting to take charge here. You know, they seem to be on the same page out there, Greg. I mean, definitely the momentum is with them. Rivers dishes to Harden. Back to Rivers. Jokic with the steal. The shot, no good. Now Denver takes it the other way. Outside, Porter. The dish to Thomas. Fires from deep. James Harden with the rebound. Their game plan needs to change if they're going to get out of this hole because he is just not there offensively. To the middle. Here's Gordon. He's off on that one. Ice D from Porter. The Nuggets trail by nine. Thomas goes in. Harris outside. All alone. Shots good by Hernan Gomez. I think Gomez has got his first points of the game. Surveying the floor, Gary Harris recognizes when his teammates have open looks and gets it to him. Here's Harden. Denver grabs the miss. Jokic has got rebound number eight here tonight in the game. And it's Eric Gordon with the foul. That's his first foul of the game, and the bonus will go to the free throw line. And not the guy you want to send to the line. He has been automatic. And Michael Porter, he has the natural attributes of an elite scorer. He's got incredibly deep range. You, you, you can see that all the way back in high school. Almost automatic for mid-range. And as he adds strength, he'll become a force inside as well. Catching up on the changes for Denver. Plumlee is checked in for Jokic. And Lyle subbed in for Juan Hernan Gomez. Yeah, a former five-star recruit. We know about the talent level for Porter. But he's also a mature, hard-working guy. Thomas kicks to Harris. Porter in the corner. And out of bounds as the Rockets gain possession. And a quick look at the numbers for James Harden. Averaging about 23 points per, seven assists, and five rebounds. And his playmaking really stands out, making his teammates better offensively with his terrific passing. Yeah, he's outstanding at controlling the tempo. I mean, keeps the ball moving, and of course, finds the open man. 
Now here's Harden. 15 points in the game. No one covering. And the Rockets lead by nine. That's platinum level dime dropping right there by Harden. Such a smart pass. Gets us to his teammates on time and on target. Here is Porter. He's a good contributor to his team, averaging about 10 and a half points a game. Here's Gordon. And he gets the basket. Officials blowing the whistle, so a chance at the line for one more. Got to him up better than that. I mean, when he's got a smaller guy on him inside, that's dinner. Barbecue chicken. Mm, that, that sounds good. <laughs> I love that. What shot, gentlemen? Free throw no good from Gordon. And Eric Gordon Clark, such a terrific tag team partner for Paul and Harden on the perimeter. I couldn't agree more. I mean, he provides spacing with the deep range he has. Very efficient shot. Not much wasted motion. He can attack closeouts off the dribble. And he gets to that basket and finishes aggressively. His strength very much at work when he does his damage. You know, you look at most winning teams in this league, and there's no denying they have an identity, who they are and how they play consistently. The Rockets fall into that category, a defined style of play and pieces that fit pretty well. First free throw is good. And Clark, talk about the Rockets' identity, their, their, their style of play. Yeah, it's all about the analytics, quite honestly. They're looking for drives and three-point field goals. Constant pressure on the defense. The long-range ball spaces the floor. And defensively, they're going to try to switch and keep the ball in front and deny the same three-pointers they're looking for at their offensive end from the opposition. Now here's Harden. He's got 15. Gordon inside goes up and lays it nice and easy. Gordon's got four points this quarter. They're doing a really good job of getting the ball inside and attacking the paint. That's Harden. an area they have completely dominated. Well, once they recognized the advantage they had inside, it made a lot of sense just to continue to attack that area. Denver calls timeout. In addition to going over the game plan and making whatever necessary adjustments have to be made, Greg, this timeout also the time for players to get rehydrated or hydrate for the first time with some Gatorade. Plenty of basketball still to be played here, and they have to get recharged. That's a great point. Without proper hydration, a player can completely run out of gas down the stretch of a, of a game, and that's something that none of these guys can afford to have happen. If you're going to battle all the way to the finish, you have got to be hydrated. Harden finds Gordon. Ice D from Porter. And so it's Porter bringing it up now for Denver. They trail by 11. And Chris Paul picks up the foul. So that will be his second foul of the game. We're in the bonus. And we'll go to the line to shoot two. And for Isaiah Thomas going into free agency, what he thought might be a big payday opportunity was, uh, Greg, anything but that. A few years ago, he was talking about backing up the Brinks truck. Had to take a deal to prove he can still play. It has had a tumultuous past few years, but this deal could work out for the team if he can get back to form. You know, you've got to have mad respect for Isaiah. I mean, his NBA journey has been... Um, remarkable, really, um, from the very last pick in the 2011 draft. That's a huge rise. Paul Millsap's checked in for Porter. And a switch here also for Houston. Clint Capella, he's checked in for Nene. And that's another area where he is just a superb player. Excellent at the free throw line. And it's Mason Plumley with the foul. So that will be his second foul of the game. We're in the bonus. And we'll go to the line to shoot two. First one falls for him. And one difference this have is that when they get to the line, they're converting. Harden hits them both. 
You know, what's most impressive about Harden to me is his versatility as a scorer. I mean, he's a remarkable combo guard with great size and strength and very efficient on the offensive end. Thomas gets it to go from 18 feet away. Thomas got four points this quarter. Rockets leading by nine. Ball outside. 157 left to play in the third. Count that one. Ennis has got seven points in the game. And there's a pattern starting to take shape here. They're working it inside and getting good shots from close range. Well, I agree with you. Four of their last five baskets have been exactly of that variety. And taken away by Paul. In the corner, Harden over Murray. And Harden gets it to go in on the assist by Paul. Paul's got six assists in the game. Denver's going to less than productive two of six from three-point land in the second half. Harden against Murray. And it's Lyles in the corner. Back to Murray from outside the arc. Here's Millsap. And the rebound paying off as they pick up two on the second chance bucket right there. Yeah, Millsap doing good work there with the extra possession converting on the offensive glass. Paul against Thomas. And Paul gets it to go in. Paul's got the lead up to 13 now for Houston. Murray against Harden. Murray surveying the D. Over to the wing. Five to shoot. Millsap inside. And that one is good with the extra effort on the glass. Millsap's got four points in the quarter. It's nine seconds separating the shot clock and game clock. Paul outside. There's 21 seconds left in the third quarter. That one goes. Count it. Nine points in the game so far. Indicative of what we've seen tonight. One team being the aggressor, the other failing to react. Yeah, and you can tell they feel like they can get inside whenever they want to. I mean, it's been carte blanche, full menu for them, and the defense really not offering any resistance. James Harden getting it done for the Houston Rockets. He put together quite a quarter, 13 points in all. And he looks to be planning for more. We've got more in store for you right after this. And while we can, now let's take a look at today's State Farm assist of the game. And, and I'm glad this was the pick because I love this pass. Such a great dish. That's what I call court vision. Yeah, and with the accuracy to go along with that vision. I mean, he put the ball in the absolute perfect spot. That's how you orchestrate it. And one quarter to go in a game that, to this point, has not been an evenly fought contest. Houston leading by 13. Trey Lyles out there with Will Barton. Then it's Thomas. Then there's Jamal Murray. And it's Millsap in at the five down low. That's the group on the four for Denver. The rejection by Paul. CP3 using every inch of that smallest frame to get a hand on it and send the shot back. How about that? The little fella showing us he can block shots, too. Mm. Harden against Murray. Pass to Green. There's the triple. Good. It's Harden with the assist that time. Harden's got six assists in the game. Over the last few years, I think Harden has fine-tuned his playmaking skills. A threat for double-digit assist every night. Now here's Murray. It's Barton on the wing. Tried to come right back with the three of his own, but it's no good. Murray against Harden. Dishes it to Green. Shoots over Barton. Green, no luck. And as he squares up for mid-range, the defender right in his face. Yeah, I like the fact, Greg, that he crowded the shooter there, made him uncomfortable, got into his airspace a bit. 
It looked like he forced the shot. Paul against Thomas. Paul goes in, and he makes the bucket, gets the whistle, and now a three-point play chance here for him. Chris Paul so good at working for his points. Even if the defense is on his back, challenging him, he still finds a way to finish. Denver making a switch here. Jokic is checked in. P.J. Tucker, he's checked in for the Rockets. That one misses for Paul. You know, it's funny, guys. I'm still not sure that Chris Paul gets enough credit for just how special he is as a player. I'm not sure why that is. I mean, very few players in league history have been able to impact the game at both ends of the floor at his elite level. Here is Harden following the score by Jamal Murray and stolen by Barton. And here comes Thomas leading the fast break. The three. Offensive rebound. Millsap misses. Houston leading by 12. Here's Tucker. And it's sent back by Jokic. And he's able to get it back. Tucker the pass to Green. Off the mark there with the three-point shot. And it's Millsap with the ball for the Denver Nuggets. And you look at Chris Paul's numbers. They stack up to any point guard that's ever played the game. Clark, what do you think is the most underrated part of Chris Paul's game? Well, I would think it would be his defense and his perimeter shooting. I don't think he gets the credit for being the perimeter shooter he is, but defense would stand out to me. Got a piece of it. And Gerald Green picks up the foul. That's foul number two for him. Denver calls timeout. Yeah, and the amount of points they've given up here in the paint, that, that's what they got to talk about. Absolutely, Greg. I mean, they're getting crushed, killed, hammered, pulverized in the post. Now let's go to the sideline and catch up with our Hall of Famer, David Aldridge. Hey, guys, when Mike Malone talked to his team during that last time out, he was not happy with their defensive performance. He said they're getting everything they want. We've got to show them we can't let that happen. You have to make a stand. You have to get some stops. And that'll get us going on a run. Guys? This has been a rough, turbulent outing for him so far. Fortunately, the rest of his team has bailed him out. Thomas against Harden. Pass to Murray. Shoots from the high post. And he sinks that one, hitting the back of the rim on the way in. Murray's got it back down to single digits for Denver. Harden against Thomas. Harden finds Capella. And they pick up two. And the Rockets lead by ten. Good concentration that time by Capella. Nuggets have gone five of ten, 50% from the field. Green against Barton at the elbow. Jokic nails the wide open jump shot. Jokic has got 27 points. And guys on defense gasping for air at this point. Well, I'll tell you what, Greg, what can they do? I mean, nobody can miss a shot. I mean, these guys are bringing it on offense right now. Now here's Murray. It's stolen by Green. And it's the Rockets on the break. Here's Tucker. Good on the three-point shot. Right now, the defense needs to do a better job of closing out on this guy. He's heating up from outside. The Nuggets trail by 11. Murray outside. There's Thomas. Plenty of space. Good, and the assist goes to Murray. Murray's got his fifth assist in this one. And that short area quickness really helps Thomas get his shot from mid-range. Now, here is Harden. And he gets the whistle. Two free throws coming up. And with the playmaking in Denver's front court, point guard Jamal Murray is free to hunt his shot. Very comfortable playing off the ball. Two shots.
And he knocks down the first one. And you look at Jamal Murray's assist numbers, he's more like a two guard. Well, he's kind of a combo, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, ish but you can't have enough shooting, and he's got a quick trigger. Gary Harris, he's checked in for the Nuggets. He makes one of two that time. He's simply just willing himself to the line here. There's Thomas with the three. Here's Jokic. It's rebounded by Houston. Capella's got rebound number 12 now. Tenacity on the glass. Paul outside. Over to the left wing. And Tucker kicks to Paul. Six to shoot. And the foul on Will Barton. That'll be his second foul of the game. To the right side. Tucker. You know, Millsap is one of the tougher defenders in the league, and you can see why. He's physical, he's smart, he's tough. He's not easy to go up against. And Chris Paul picks up the foul. That's his third foul of the game. Goes up off the inbound. Jokic, no good. Rockets leading by 10. And here is Paul. Kicks to Tucker. Martin with the rebound. He's been wayward and just off on about everything he's put up in this period. And the rejection by Harden. And he's able to get it back. Jokic, no good. Houston's gone a disappointing 2 of 6 on three-point attempts here in the fourth. Here's Green. Oh! Hey, hey, hey! Woo-hoo! Wow! And this sort of awesome dunk is one of the reasons this team is in charge of this game. Well, there's a swagger out there. You can see it on the court that they possess and are not afraid to show it either. Boy, and I used to love going up and jamming it down like that, guys. And it's the Rockets with the ball. The Nuggets getting the bucket. Just five to shoot. Lob pass to Capella. And it goes out of bounds. Nice touch by Green. No clue where that pass was going. That is a brutal turnover. The Nuggets trail by 10. Guys are looking for a spark here. Yeah, a cold stretch offensively for sure. Thomas's shot is off. He had a couple in the first, but so far he's been unable to get uncorked here. Paul dishes to Green. Shoots over Barton. Barton with some nice D. And so it's Barton bringing it up for the Denver Nuggets. Paul with the steal, and here comes Harden, leading the fast break. And there's Green on the assist by Harden. Green's got 21. And he can smell blood in the water. Excellent finish. Yeah, no let up. A killer instinct on display, trying to put this team away. I love the tenacity. Well, he's been excellent thus far, Kevin, but it still hasn't been enough to get them the lead. They've been the better rebounding team by a healthy margin, but it hasn't been enough. Yeah, you know, they're hustling and giving a good effort, that's for sure. But unfortunately, the execution has been lacking. And you know what? You allow a guy to get right to the rim like that, that's your only option. Yeah, exactly. I mean, free throws are always better than a layup. So I'd agree with you there, Greg. And, you know, these second-round picks that sometimes emerge as outstanding players, Will Barton, a case in point. As a matter of fact, he can give you the handbook for being a, an outstanding second-round pick because he's really pretty good at just about everything you need to do on the basketball court. And he knocks down the first one. And talking about Barton, you look at the body type, the game that he plays, Clark, well built for the modern era of pro basketball. Yeah, especially since he's added some strength, Kevin. He can guard one through three. Uh, you can't push him around as much as you once could. And, of course, this guy does not lack for confidence. That one is no good. You know, one of the things that's fun to watch, guys, is the evolution of a player. And Barton has really evolved into a solid player. Even though he was a second-round pick, he's come a long way. 
Green against Barton. Six to shoot. Here's the teardrop. And he gets contact and the whistle on the shot. Two shots coming up. And there's the foul against Denver. You know, every coach talks about playing team basketball, Clark. When it comes to the fans, they really come out to see the stars. What do you think is the psychology behind that? Well, I think fans enjoy elite players and great talent across any sport. But they also recognize that team two. play is critical to winning. So I think it's a combination. Fans, I think we've got to give them a little more credit. Sure, they want to see the Stars play, but they want to win, and they know to win, teams have to be about team basketball, not just highlighting and enjoying the Stars. And not a single free throw attempt in that first half, but he has been far more active since the break and drawn some fouls. No free throws, good from Green. The Nuggets trail by 11. Murray, the pass to Millsap. Harden against Harris. Now the pass to Jokic. Here's Murray up on top. Here's Barton, and they turn over the 24-second buzzer, signaling the shot clock violation. Houston leading by 11. Here's Green. He kicks it to Capella. Now Green. Shot clock at six. Off the left rim and out. Denver's gone ice cold from three-point land. 0-4 since the start of the final quarter. Barton, wide open. He fires. Basket is good. The assist from Harris. Harris has got assist number five here tonight. Ball against Murray. The three from Harden. Drops in the tray. Harden's got four this quarter. He's been a different guy here in the second half. His shooting percentage far better than it was before the break. Denver calls timeout. And a wise move to call timeout there. Uh, they need to settle down a bit. They've been playing out of control at times here, and it shows with their turnover numbers. And now let's present our Jordan player of the game, Chris Paul. And I love that it's been a hard-charging performance. Jump shots have been kind of an afterthought. His main goal has been to attack the rim and put the D in some tough spots and also finishing strong. He silenced this crowd with an unreal display. His ability to drown out the noise and the hostility of an opposing crowd is pretty special. And Chris Paul picks up the foul. That will get him his fourth foul of the game. Murray with it. Pass to Jokic. Shoots over Capella. Pulled the shot a little left, but the bounce goes his way. 31 points for Jokic. And, and you know, he's really been one of the few bright spots for them, trying to will this team to victory. It's Harden with the drive. Pass to Capella. And another steal for him. His anticipation has been off the charts. Wiping the ball away with just such ease. Love how creative Murray is with the ball. Just dribbling through defenders like he's out there by himself. Murray against Paul. Here's Harden. That counts. He's put up 13 shots, and he's had eight of those go in. And it's all about the release when you shoot the floater. Here's Jokic. He feeds it to Millsap. Up and in on the way up. And, you know, Millsap ready to shoot anytime he's close to the basket. Gets it off before the defense can react. Rockets leading by eight. Ball outside. Harden gets the bucket. Harden's got eight here in the quarter. Yeah, a volume shooter, and, and Harden is aggressive and assertive 
at really trying to jumpstart himself. And when he does, watch out. Here's Murray. James Harden picking up that last basket. Murray kicks to Jokic. Rebounded by Capella. Capella's got 14 rebounds tonight. Going after. Harden against Harris. Harden left side. Gentlemen, two shots. Blue shots. Free throw good from Harden. and both. Now here's Murray. And clearly we will not be witnessing a spirited comeback tonight, albeit as exciting as that would be. This was an excellent all-around performance for the Rockets. A few times this season turnovers have cost them, but they really kept the ball under control. They were both focused and relentless. And with this effort tonight, grabbing their eighth win of the year. Man, always nice to get win number one against the opponent. You, you'll be seeing a total of this matchup four times over the course of the year. So they set the tone tonight, though, for their season series against the Nuggets. And guys, one of the steady and outstanding players putting in another impressive performance, it was a big time outing for James Harden. Every inch of the floor was his tonight as he came out and injected an energy into every play. You've got to be more physical than that against Millsap. He's good at fighting his way through contact on the way up. Murray against Paul. So we see the Rockets taking the win here. They came in here and took care of business like they were the home team. And, and Kevin, how about the mental toughness that this group showed? They, they were never yes. rattled at all by the opposing fans. And a chance now to send it over to David Aldridge standing by courtside. David. Thanks, Kevin. Congrats, James, on the win. This is a very tough team. What does it mean to beat them? It meant a lot. We wanted to come out here and play with some energy. Uh, guys uh, made shots defensively. Uh, it was a gutsy win for us. I'm sure you'll see these guys again. Thanks, James. Back to you, Kevin. David, thank you as always. And that's going to do it tonight, folks, for our broadcast. For Greg Anthony, Clark Kellogg, and David Aldridge, this is Kevin Harlan. Thanks for watching this presentation of the NBA on 2K Sports. So long.